So can you please share with us, uh, tell us who you are, organization you represent, and a bit about the, the Free Palestine Social Forum that you'll be attending. Uh, my name is William Copeland from Detroit, Michigan with EMIAC, East Michigan Environmental Action Council. Later this year, I will be going to Porto Alegre, Brazil to participate in the World Social Forum Free Palestine. I'm very honored to be a part of a U.S.-Canada delegation to represent EMIAC and to represent Detroit, Michigan. The purpose of this delegation, um, there was a worldwide call put out to investigate and find ways to support um, Palestine and the Palestinian people in their struggle for um, autonomy and independence. And the World Social Forum views this um, issue, views this struggle as a very important struggle on a worldwide basis. Um, there have been many questions because many governments around the world do not want to touch this issue with a 10-foot pole or they feel in solidarity to Israel and the um, governments and institutions of Brazil were willing to host this um, organization and host um, people who may be labeled as um, troublemakers or may be labeled as dissidents by other governments. So we'll be going to Porto Alegre, Brazil. The purpose of this forum um, has three main purposes. Um, one is to show the strength of the worldwide solidarity with the Palestinian people and how there are so many actions and initiatives taking place that will promote um, justice, peace, and solidarity. Second, to create effective actions that will lead to and ensure Palestinian self-determination, including is ending Israeli co co colonization and occupation, including the rights of the Arab and Palestinian citizens of Israel. They don't even have rights if they're um, Palestinian citizens of Israel. And promoting all the rights of Palestinian people, um, including refugees, including the diaspora, um, the rights that they have, the rights to return to their homes, um, the rights as human beings. And lastly, of course, discussion and strategy. So it has many different goals, and we came together as a United States delegation to participate, come from our communities, show solidarity, and work towards um, ensuring their right and showing support for the Palestinian peoples. Thank you. Um, can you tell us a bit about the delegation that you will be a part of and then also speak to why you have decided to go, why you are going? Um, this is a delegation that has been working hard. Um, many different people from around the country, some of the people have come together under the United States Social Forum, um, working with groups such as the Palestinian Community Network, um, USPCN, Palestinian Youth Movement, um, getting consultation from other groups in Palestine um, and around the world, working with groups um, such as IJAN, the International Jewish Anti-Zionist Network. So working with a variety of groups, the Malcolm X Grassroots Movement. Um, so EMIAC, I was honored to come um, and bring EMIAC's voice into this space. Um, some of the goals of the group um, we have as our first and foremost goal to support the aspiration and goals of full liberation for the Palestinian people. Uh, we want to build a delegation um, that reflects the way we understand our struggle and reflects the diversity and the multiplicity of many struggles going on in the United States. And we wanted to strengthen the organizing um, towards supporting the Palestinian people. We talk a lot about intersectionality and talk a lot about um, connecting up the um, oppressions and the um, hegemony that the Palestinians are facing with not just showing support and solidarity, but connecting them and recognizing that here in the United States, here in Canada, here in our side of the world, we have these same struggles. And you can see the mechanisms of domination, the mechanisms of environmental injustice, the mechanisms of corporate rules are the same mechanisms. And so supporting the struggle here, it is very beautiful and it is very important for their human rights but we also are learning a lot about um, how this domination works. And we hope that um, also there could be a mutual community to community support. So how I was involved, um, there's a woman named um, Dr. Rabab Abdulhadi, who used to be a professor at U of M Dearborn, now is a professor at San Francisco State. Um, 
works very deeply in Arab and Arab American studies. Um, now she's working out there. Um, she, she was in town for a conference, um, and I was in town um, for a conference um, on, for Arab and Arab American writers called Rawi. And she was in the audience, and um, we had met each other at the U.S. Social Forum. And she pulled me aside and told me that this organizing was taking place, um, asked me to consider it, and then she began painting a picture and talking about the possibilities of doing some specific work with solidarity between Detroit and Palestine. Um, she talks about how she has helped to organize um, African heritage delegations, working with people such as Angela Davis, Robin Kelly, and many others to connect up experiences from um, on a nationwide basis from African Americans, black folks, Africans, um, new Africans, working with our people to connect the struggles in Palestine, to connect going from that civil rights, going from that um, apartheid, going from that um, anti-colonialist struggle that we're familiar with to see what's happening there. Many of the people, they recently, um, earlier, I believe it was in August or September, put out a letter. Um, some of the people said that um, even comparing it to Jim Crow, some of the people have just been shocked and had never in their life seen such um, repression and oppression once they got a chance to put their eyes on the situation in Palestine and see the various humanitarian crises, see the various, you know, what's been called apartheid, what is called just naked, stark repression. And so for me, um, I have a passion of connecting up Detroit with the worldwide struggle and pic painting our picture, not just in terms of a Detroit struggle, but painting it to see how these mechanisms that make Detroit a colony within the United States, the same mechanisms are applying to repress people. And so what does that mean, you know, to really have real global solidarity, to real, really have that connection. So I was just honored and fascinated by uh, Rabab's invitation. And so I began the talks um, to get involved with the delegation, began the talks to share some information with EMIAC um, and talk with different folks. Um, and lastly, from those talks, we've begun to have small conversations with other Detroiters to start talking about, especially for next year, um, doing more things with solidarity, doing more things to demonstrate and to forge that connection. Um, and that will take place more so after I get back from the, um, from the forum to show that this is not just a one-time event. I'm not just going for an event's purposes, but I'm really going to start, not even start, but to continue um, conversations and continue connections, not only with the black community, but um, since I'm a member of that community, um, that's one community that I'm definitely able to, um, to work with, but with all the communities in the Detroit area. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Now, in terms of a broader process of movement building within the United States and, and globally, what role do you see the Free Palestine Social Forum playing in the U.S. Social Forum movement building process and then also in an international movement building process. Um, is that, is it, do you see it playing a role in advancing movements nationally and globally? Um, and if you do, then how, how do you see that? Um, I see one of the things about the U.S. Social Forum which make it I can't speak enough to say unique, but I can definitely say special um, within a lot of political things is it really has an active sense of correspondence and connection with global movements. Um, we've talked a lot about in the U.S. Social Forum about, I'm trying to find the exact language, but about taking leadership, I would say, from the World Social Forum and taking leadership from global movements that are impacting the World Social Forum. Because we don't want to just rest on the United States privilege and just rest on, well, if we make life better for the quote-unquote minorities here in the United States, then our movement is a success. We're very aware that the United States plays a role, um, a colonialistic, imperialistic, and now a corporate role, um, you know, in dominating and subjugating these other countries. So it's not just enough to have a success of a United States-based movement. We have to define our success 
based on what other people around the globe are going to. And that might end up in some drastic changes that we're just beginning to envision. Um, so this is definitely in line in that. We're definitely going to learn more about how the United States, how our tax dollars, how our corporations, how our policies are affecting other countries and learn to have that um, correspondence and correlation. Um, learn to how to be more active in things such as the boycott, divest, and sanction movement in which people are um, saying, you know, these particular products, these particular corporations are supporting Israel. You know, so we need to be more aware of, just like we've had different things with agriculture, and we know that, you know, at certain times it was Taco Bell, or certain times it was Coca-Cola, or certain times, you know, we were aware of how certain products were affecting global um, repression. We need to be more aware of how that's true with Israel, um, and which, you know, which things to go and what are the moments that we can put pressure on those things um, from our position here. Um, and lastly, in terms of the worldwide movement, this is going to be a major strategy time for the Palestinian people. Um, they, they're really promoting this and really encouraging this as a key moment um, that's going to help develop um, the worldwide movement. Um, analogously to the apartheid movement in which, you know, there was worldwide pressure and for a lot of black folks here, you know, who were up in the 80s, I was a little too young, I was a, a wee, a wee <laughs> one, um, so, so I just hear about it, you know, in hindsight, but there was a powerful moment and it developed a lot of the activism um, for black folks and for internationally minded folks here in this country was you know, letting people know about the apartheid movement, free Nelson Mandela, supporting the ANC, putting the word out, you know, that the United States was supporting the racist apartheid regime in South Africa. And so we're hoping to build that momentum um, and let people know that it is an apartheid situation in Palestine, you know. And so we are a global people. The 21st century is has a lot of global situations, um, even more so than 30 years ago. And so now we're joining that global um, fight for freedom.